I'm Kenneth McAllister, farm and ranch, third generation. My sons are fourth generation. We farm in Wilbarger County, Wichita, and in Archer County. We raise wheat, cotton, grain, sorghum, corn, wheel. I'll tell you this, there ain't nothing we ain't planted but peanuts, and we planted everything else. My grandfather started back in the late 50s. My dad come back home to get started farming in the late 60s. So I graduated in 82, got married to my high school sweetheart, and had three boys, and I got two of them involved. I've got my granddaughter out here today running one of the grain carts. We're a family operation, and we're trying to thrive and survive. We're harvesting wheat, been in wheat harvest here for about close to three weeks. We normally start planting around in October. Harvest usually starts around Memorial Day weekend, the end of May, 1st of June. It's a pretty good crop to watch grow. It's aggravating, you spend a lot of money on it and then it could get wiped out at the last minute. Last year it was a bomb, you know, we got it all drought out or froze out. This year here we are, we've actually got some moisture, we're actually producing a pretty good crop. We've actually got some fields that we've made some 65, 70 bush wheat on. And the average is going to be somewhere between 35 and 40. And I'm going to say we're going to average between high 40s. Well, it's going to an elevator somewhere. It's just a matter of today we're picking and choosing which one's the best price, which one we can get dumped at because they're all getting full because the wheat market has been taking a pretty good beating. Nobody's wanting to buy any wheat right now with the uncertainty of everything going on in the world and the money and the interest rates and, you know, just everything in general just kind of got nobody in the purchase of wheat. Bunch of it's going to make some kind of bread. There'll be some of it used for cattle feed, but I mean, a lot of it's going to be some kind of flour. We're kind of on the innovative side of wanting to be a no-till farmers and trying to protect and give soil health to our soil. So basically, we like to leave the straw standing. We like stripping it with our stripper heads, the shelburne heads. The more residue you can leave standing or the more residue you can keep in the field, the better you are. And we get good results by shading the ground that way. You know, we're standing on top of this earth eating, but we got microbes in that soil that's helping us and we gotta feed them. So we need to leave standing residue and we need to leave it shaded so the ground temperature will stay enough that we can keep them microbes alive. When I started, I never thought that I'd have to be paying the money I'm paying today for diesel. I never would have thought I'd have to be paying half a million dollars for tractors. It's a legacy, but it's a dying legacy. It's aggravating, but this is a way of life. I enjoy the fact that every day I get up, it's a new challenge. Watching the family come together in our operation and enjoying one another and watching everybody become a success. Watching crops grow and, and turn into a good successful year. It's exciting to know that when I produce beef, grain, cotton for clothing, corn, you know, the stuff that we do to make the world go round, it's, it's a revolving action. And uh, I like for people to know where their food comes from and, and that I was one of them that helped produce it.